we've done 12 top 10 homebrew classes for D&D. I guess that means we only have one left. True enough. Uh, let's delve into the final and last one for the Artificer for 5e home, top 10 homebrew subclasses. I'm Nerdarchist Ted. I'm Nerdarchist Steve. Welcome to Nerdarchy for nerds by nerds. I guess it's time to make some magic happen. All right. So if you've been watching these, then you kind of know we picked the top 10 by what we kind of decided are the most popular and by popular, the things that people are most interested in looking up. So we go by the number of views and those top 10, we list those and then we pick one we just kind of like, whether it's because we like like the mechanics they've done or maybe we just thematically like the concept. So, you know, we'll, we'll pull up the, the list over on D&D &D Beyond, uh, you know, go go through, we'll list them from, you know, what, one through 10. Uh, then we go ahead and grab one and uh, dive into the subclass, give you guys our thoughts, our feedback. So speaking of lists, we have Arcano uh, Mechanist, Arcane Gunsmith, Doofenshmirtz, Akmo Bombardier, Doctor, Monster Trainer, Gunsmith, Amalgamologist, I think that word's completely made up. Uh, Biomancer and the Archivist. Now, I found several of these very, very tempting. I mean, Doofenshmirtz. Uh, you know, my kids used to watch Perry the Platypus all the time, Phineas and Ferb. So, that, I, I, to be fair, I've never actually watched that show. I thought Doofenshmirtz was a made up word, just mm -hmm. like the uh, Amalgamologist. But part of me, just for the sheer hilarity of having to have Dave say those words over and over again, I was kind of leaning towards having one of those be be our top. But well, listen, any you know, anyone whose whose goal is to take over the tri tri state area just has a gives me warm, a warm fuzzy feeling inside. So with that, it's only fair to mention that D and D Beyond is the sponsor for this video. We'll put a link down in the description. You can actually follow along by going over to D and D Beyond. You may have to be logged into to your account in order to see everything, but you can sign up for a free account. No big deal. And also, if you just want more information, we have an article over on the website. So you're going to find a top ten five E D and D artificer subclasses by a factor of three. There will be a link in the description as well as one of these cards up here. You can click one of them. If you're looking for another way to support Nerdarchy to keep making videos like this one or the articles that, you know, Dave uh, previously mentioned over on our website, nerdarchy.com, why not check us, over, check us out over on Patreon and support us there. As a special thank you, every month you'll receive 5e content from both players and DMs alike. We're making magic items, which sometimes we turn into print and play cards. Feats, spells, races, subclasses, probably a bunch of things that I'm not even forget thinking about dropping encounters. Uh, we even throw up maps from uh, that we use in our own games over there. You'll get a chance to game with Nerdarchy and more. So there will be a link down in the description as well as the card up here. You can also go over there and download a free sample to kind of see what kind of rewards you're gonna get every month. All right, so we've got one picked here. So we're gonna talk about the Biomancer Simic from Zarok, and obviously this is for the base class Artificer. An elf gasps for breath underwater, struggling to inject the syringe. When he does so, gills flare out of his neck. A halfling gives a cry of pain as a wolf bites her hand off. She applies a thick organic bandage to the stump, which grows as a giant claw, reaching out to seize the beast. An orc chained to a pillar in an airship glances around for any sign of their captors before clicking a command to the squirrel hiding up their sleeve, who grows claws of sharpened bone and severs the orc's bonds. Biomancers are artificers who have turned their skills to, to self-improvement in the most literal sense, reshaping their allies and their own bodies for combat. A biomancer is a student of life in the most literal sense, learning the secrets of growth and decay and using magic to empower such effects. Biomancy is a new tradition growing out of a combination of combat medicine and fielding those more skilled at medical arts as soldiers. We literally on our list of uh, future videos to do have a biomancy um, subclass class. Like I don't even know what we wanted to do with it, but the idea of biomancy is something that really intrigues me. The idea that you're, you're manipulating life force um, on the kind of like the opposite end of the spectrum of the necromancer. Like if for you, it's all about, about abundance of life force, maybe transmuting and modifying it, controlling it. 
So to you know, for to me, like this really like jumped out as a subclass. One of, one of my very first characters, you know, in in D anD D that I played with, you know, what is now the Nerdarchy group. I, I've talked about, you know, Grevin the Beardless One, you know, numerous times where he was, you know, a psionicist, but he had the ability to grow claws because he had an affinity towards scorpions. So like, there is definitely some some love in my heart for this concept of like, oh, well, I can just grow a claw where my hand used to be. I, I'm definitely, you know, got a little little welling up going. Yeah, early psionics was weird. So, <laughs> tool proficiency. When you adopt the specialization at third level, you gain proficiency with leather workers' tools. If you already have proficiency, you gain proficiency with one other artisan tools of your choice. I would even go on with, like, maybe a medicine kit. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, or the medicine skill would right. be interesting. I mean, it's not technically a tool, so I understand why you wouldn't. Right. But, uh, you know, it just, it feels like it would work for this one in particular. I, I would agree. Um, so as always, you know, there's, there's not all, as always, but frequently there's, there's spells that you get added to the, to the spell list for this artificer. They get a third level, they get cure wounds and inflict wounds. Fifth level, alter self and dragon's breath. Ninth level, life transference and vampiric touch. 13th level, death ward and guardian of nature. And 17th level, contagion and enervation. So it's a great spell list. They all make sense for what this what this particular artificer does. Uh, we also get living focus. You may use a living creature as a focus for your artificer spells. In order to do so, you must either prepare them as a focus or channel magic through them by force. You may cast artificer spells with a range of self or touch on a living focus who is within 60 feet of you, and you determine who any additional targets of the spell may be. If a spell requires concentration, the living focus must maintain concentration on the spell and choose to end it at any point during the spell's duration. To prepare a living focus, you perform a special special ritual while you maintain physical contact with them. You perform the ritual over the course of one hour, which can be done during a short or long rest. You may only have one prepared living focus at a time, and if you perform the ritual on a second creature, the first one ceases to be your living focus. When you cast spells with a range of touch, you may order your living focus to move up to 10 feet and deliver the spell. This movement does not provoke attacks of opportunity and is a free action for the creature. You may also make a creature a living focus by channeling magic through it by force. As an action, make a melee spell attack against a target. On a hit, you may use your bonus action to cast a spell with a casting time of an action through the creature. The spell uses your spell slot, spell save DC, spell attack bonus, and spell casting ability, but is otherwise treated as the target creature for casting the spell. On a miss, the creature instead takes force damage equal to your intelligence modifier, and you can't cast spells other than cantrips until the end of your next turn. You can use this ability a number of times equal to your intel- intelligence modifier and you gain all expended uses when you finish a long rest. You cannot target constructs or undead with this ability. Wow, that is very crazy, very interesting, and definitely something that can be uh, a- a- exploited, but also can be a lot of fun. So first of all, you're getting an additional concentration. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's a big deal. I've experimented with it in my own games. I don't know that I would put it in a product at this point as Nerdarchy mm-hmm. uh, because it really does break the norm and concentration is really a big deal in 5e, you know, so I would really have to think long and hard about it. Would I allow this in my game? Yeah, <laughs> I, I, I would, but I know a lot of DMs probably wouldn't because like that's the big mitigating factor for spellcasters in 5e is that concentration. And I, I don't, fully understand like chaining the the spell through an unwilling living creature other than it might do some damage to them uh and and you can affect them and like maybe you're trying to hit the thing on the other side of them i mean you know like if if like your ally is standing in front of you and you just kind of reach out they're not your focus and you're just going to force your way through to have thunder wave hit on the other side like okay that would be kind of interesting so you're not hitting your allies um but, you know, it'd also be, you know, you've got a living focus and a forced focus. So technically you could have both of them be holding a concentration for you and you have cast two and you're still not concentrating on, on a spell. Uh, so, like, I think that's an element that, you know, it's it's being considered and looked at. Um, 
again, I like I like it at its at its uh you know at its onset. I'd have to see how it's actually done in practice, but so far I'm I'm definitely cool with it. Organic augmentation at fifth level, you develop more refined control over your living foci and the healing or harm you create through their bodies. Whenever you cast an artifice or spell with your leather work tools or through a living focus, you or the target gain a bonus to one roll of the spell each turn. That roll must restore hit points or be a damage roll for a spell within a range of self or touch, and, a, and the bonus equals your intelligence modifier minimum of plus one. In addition, you can sour and corrupt magical healing. When an enemy who is below their hit point maximum attempts to regain hit points with a spell or magical effect, you can use your reaction to pervert the healing, causing them to instead take an equal amount of force damage and reducing their hit point maximum by that amount. You can use this ability a number of number of times equal to your intelligence modifier minimum once, and you regain all expended uses when you finish a long rest. So first thing, not a big deal. There's already things that do something similar to that um, for artificers. Second thing, I like it, but I feel like there needs to be a saving throw, an attack roll. It shouldn't just automatically happen. Yeah, I would agree. Uh, I think a saving throw uh, works. I'm not certain what I would uh, what I would apply there. Maybe a Constitution saving throw. Um, you know, uh, and this is a magical effect, so you know that that's always one of those uh, those weird things. Since sometimes it doesn't always specify, like, yeah. oh, you know, you know, is this magical or not? I would I would waffle between con wisdom and charisma. Okay. I would look at the saves for those. I really I'm thinking wisdom or charisma maybe because I feel like you're usurping the will of the original intent of the spell and the caster. Okay. And almost it's like a um yeah you know, or even like require a caster check from the person doing it, mm. you know, or something like that might might be in order. Might be too easy. I don't know. But like I look Thematically, I like it. I think there's something there. Needs a little tweaking. So we get restoration and rending. At starting ninth level, you gain advanced knowledge of flesh crafting, shaping creatures to fit your ends. Whenever you cast a spell at first level or higher through your living focus, the creature gains temporary hit points equal to 2 die 6, plus your intelligence modifier, a minimum of 1 temporary hit point. These temporary hit points fade after 10 minutes. You can cast blindness, deafness with a range of touch without expending a spell slot. You can do so a number of times equal to your intelligence modifier minimum of once, and you regain all the expended uses when you finish a long rest. In addition, your bond with, with your prepared living focus has grown stronger. You gain the following benefits. The distance at which you can use your living focus as a spellcasting focus is increased to 120 feet if you cannot see them, or up to 600 feet, if there is nothing blocking your view of them. If your living focus has made a death saving throw in the last minute, you may take an action to expend a spell slot first level or higher to provide them with a number of successes equal to the spell slot's level. If you stabilize them with this, with this action, they immediately regain die six hit points. You cannot do so again until you both have completed a long rest. So there's some definitely some cool things in here. Um... I mean, adding 120 feet to 600 feet to your spells, kind of a big deal, I would say. Uh, yeah, especially since they are talking about things that are typically range range self. Uh, you know, I think that that's pretty crazy. Like, okay, I'm going to have my raven fly over there and thunder wave, you know, the dude and fly off. Like, what the heck just happened? That the, yeah. the, the raven crowed <laughs> and, you know, 15 square feet of... Uh, you know, people just got zapped, uh, but definitely a lot of fun. Definitely some things to, to kind of, you know, look at and tweak. I, I think 600 feet is a long way to, to, to look. I mean, it's possible, you know, walk out, you know, down the street. You can see 600 feet away, but man, that is... That Add is a spell sniper to that, right? So like... Then if it's a, a range spell with an attack roll, you're doubling well, it. Well, I think it'll I think the living focus only counts for Oh uh, touch. Are, yeah. yeah touch touch and self. Biological mastery. By 15th level, you have manipulated and altered your body so often that your change becomes persistent and you can resist unwanted changes. You can cast animal shapes once without expending a spell slot, provided your living focus as a spell casting focus. Uh, once you cast it this way, you can't do so until you finish a short or long rest. You gain advantage on saving throws against spells that would inflict blindness, deafness, or transform your transform your body against your will. You also gain one of the following sets of benefits. And whenever you take a long rest that includes spending an hour working with your leather worker's tools, you may switch set of benefits that you gain. 
So you got Beast of Burden. You count as one size larger when determining your counting capacity and weight you can push, drag, or lift. You can serve as a mount to a humanoid whose size is equal to or smaller than yours, and they gain the benefits of being mounted. When you use your action to dash, you can make one melee weapon attack or to shove a creature as part of that action. If you, if you move at least 10 feet in a straight line before making this attack or shove, you either gain a plus 5 to the attack's damage roll or push the target up to 10 feet away from you if you choose to shove and you succeed. That's literally the charger feet. <laughs> well, I think it's, it's pushing... Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, deep diver. You can breathe air and water, and you have a swimming speed equal to your walking speed. You gain a blind sight out to thirty feet. When in a body of water, you gain blind sight in the water to a range of sixty feet. You can attempt to hide even when you're only lightly obscured in deep water or rocky terrain, or by heavy rain, falling snow, mist, and other natural phenomena. And you gain advantage on stealth checks while fully submerged in water. Skyward Step. You're always under the effects of the jump spell, and your jump height and distance are based on your intelligence modifier, not your strength score. You have ray-like fins that you can use as wings to slow your fall or allow you to glide. When you fall and aren't incapacitated, you can subtract up to 100 feet from the fall when calculating fall falling damage and can move up to 2 feet horizontally for every 1 foot you descend. When your whole body is 5 feet or more above the ground, nearest flat surface or more than 5 feet square, your movement does not provoke opportunity attack. So none of these are particularly game breaking. They're kind of cool and flavorful, not a big deal. Um, you know, and you're getting a lot of 15th level uh, though, and a lot of options. Uh, you know, one of the things that stands out to me, like while you can have a living focus, there's no mechanic that gives you a living focus. That is correct. Like you need to still acquire it somehow. And I don't think you can get a, familiar as an artificer i don't believe it's on their spell list no that one that one is not but magic initiate ritualist will get it for you uh you know dipping a level into wizard will get it for you and since it's homunculus, already you can get a homunculus as an effusion mm -hmm. as well um so so like there, so there's some things but also like so it's not really built into the class that you can do this but also i think you could just pick somebody in your party as well you absolutely <laughs> could be like all right fred yeah, you're doing it. What? Here, sit down. <laughs> sit down. Let us talk for a while. Why are you touching me? I'm going to be touching you for the next hour. <laughs> so, uh, that... Do not living focus people without their consent, please. Uh, so this is this is one of those things like, as is, I would totally allow this in my game. Nothing to me seems game breaking. Uh, but as always with any of these homebrew type things, I have to see how things kind of play out to see if there's a scenario that I hadn't considered or hadn't hadn't thought of, you know, in its design. Like three concentrations. <laughs> but yeah, there might be some things that need some tweaking, but for the most part, it seems okay. And I also feel like if you're holding three concentrations, you're probably like buffing one of the other party members or other party members. And, you know, that might be cool or it might be excessive depending how it plays out in your game. Like, I mean, I know there's a lot of people out there who who feel that concentration is this big thing. Yeah. Uh, and I, I as a player, I have def definitely struggled with it uh, through one of, one of my characters because there's a lot of really cool things that I want to do with concentration. But like <laughs> the game's like, nah, you can't do that you um, just enlarged and hasted the barbarian uh and maybe something else and blurred them <laughs> right like the barbarian was unstoppable enough before now it's ridiculous but but to me having played in those earlier editions where uh, there was no you're holding a concentration for uh you know for a, an, an effect the wizard would spend an hour setting up their spells before like the big battle and it was just ridiculous to behold but but to me like that's that's a part of the game that 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 is is out there and you know what you've got access to the magic i don't see you know why why that's you know why, why it's such a problem so you know what sure i have no problem let's 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 see how much can be exploited and see all right can we have that barbarian who's enlarged and hasted and is it going to greatly affect the course of the entire game if one combat really goes in the favor i've seen the dice favor one particular side in the battle and it hasn't adjusted anything it has me like man do I, I need to change the dice in this game i think what you're really forgetting is those games where you sat there and waited an hour for the wizard to finish their turn because <laughs> they had all this stuff going on right and and like i mean this does eliminate some of the worst things like you're not doing you're not going to be combining this with conjuration magic and also 
as cool as artificers are, they're still half casters. And like, it's come up in like some of the games that I've played in where I'm playing it and they're like, Oh, you know, why don't you do this? And they're like, Oh, cause you're an artificer. <laughs> right. Like, cause everyone else is like casting fourth level spells, fifth level spells. And I'm casting third. <laughs> so. I, I'm actually pre was prepping my artificer for your game on Saturday. Yeah. And I happened to look through the list like, yeah, we get access to fifth level spells at 17th level. And I'm like, <sighs> yeah, there are other cool reasons for being an artificer, and we're just going to remember those as artificers. <laughs> I, I I love my artificer. He's you know a, a lot of fun, but those higher level spells, that's not the reason to play them. <laughs> so that that's our biomancer, you know, that's that's Zarhox, uh, Zarox, our, uh artificer subclass, the biomancer. I dig it. Would totally allow it in the game. Love to look for those those things that we might feel need need tweaking or revising question is how do you feel about those uh abilities in the biomass or would you allow it in your game uh, how would you do it share your thoughts and theories down below discuss with the nerdarchy community while you're down there don't forget to do all those fun things that make nerdarchy and youtube happy like share subscribe even go ahead and attune to that notification bell quick reminder mondays wednesdays fridays we drop new videos here on the channel come on back can't wait till then no problem we got you covered up here, you can check out Monk 5e Top 10 D&D Beyond Homebrew Subclasses. So until next time, stay, stay nerdy. nerdy.